The readings that are prescribed throughout the year are given to us by the lectionary. Now the lectionary is that cycle that begins counting from Pentecost and goes throughout the entirety of the year. And if we were to follow the lectionary readings for every single day, both the epistle and the gospel reading, we would generally read through the entirety of the New Testament within a single year. That is, except for the book of Revelation. When the lectionary was devised, it was thought that the book of Revelation was something that was a bit too complicated for people to be able to just simply hear within the liturgical worship and be able to know and understand exactly what it is that the book was talking about. And so of all of the books of the New Testament, the book of Revelation is the only one that is not included in the lectionary. The first reading for the day in the Divine Liturgy occurs here in the middle of the nave. And the reader will read from the book of the epistles, which includes those books written by Paul, Peter, James, Jude, and our own patron, the Apostle John, as well. And before he does so, the deacon or the priest will exclaim with a loud voice, Wisdom! Let us attend! And so that is a, a clear sign for us to be able to say, Stop! Pay attention! The words that are about to be proclaimed are something that is very important for us to hear and to understand. And even leading up to the reading of the epistle itself, the reader will first proclaim what is called a prokimenon, which is a psalm verse which is meant to lead into the reading and oftentimes changes with the feast day that is being celebrated or a particular psalm verse that is referenced on uh, a particular tone on Sundays. Following the prokimenon, the reading itself is read, and after the reading, there are more psalm verses and a refrain that the choir sings of Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. While all of that is happening with the epistle reading, the priest is preparing to proclaim the, the gospel. And in order to prepare, he first does a very small sensing around the holy table. And after sensing around the holy table, he then says a prayer, asking for the Lord to illumine the hearts of the faithful, not only to be able to hear the words of the gospel, but to be able to practically put those words of the gospel into action, both in the things that people do and the things even that we think. And by praying that prayer, Lord willing, he is preparing not only himself, but all of the faithful to be able to receive the words of the gospel. When the reader has finished and the choir has sung the Alleluia verses, the priest will turn around and exclaim once again, Wisdom, let us attend. Let us hear the Holy Gospel. And so again, it's an emphasis on now is the time to really pay attention because something important is about to happen. But by saying, let us hear the Holy Gospel, the Lord is attempting to, to show us that it's more than about just having words pass into our eardrums. In the Gospels, there are a couple of occasions where the Lord, after saying a very particularly hard saying, says, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Meaning, he who is truly able to understand the words that I've just spoken, may he put those words into action. And so the same is the encouragement of the priest saying, let us hear the Holy Gospel, so that we not just hear the words, and listen to them, but that we actually hear them with our spiritual ears and with the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to actually put those words into action. After making that exclamation, the priest then blesses the faithful and says, Peace be to all. This is one of the first blessings that the priest does uh, during the Divine Liturgy. But remember, we began the liturgy with that exclamation of, In peace let us pray to the Lord. And so it is, again, a hearkening back to that peace being maintained so that we can receive the good news of the gospel. Because if we are not in peace with God, if we are not in peace with one another, we are not properly able to receive the good news of the gospel itself. And our Lord even shows this when he visits the disciples in the upper room following the resurrection, when he first appears in the room and says, Peace be to you. And then he is able to proclaim to them 
the good news of the resurrection. The gospel reading, whether done by the priest or the deacon, always occurs from the holy doors. It is that proclamation of the gospel of the coming of the word of God. And so it always is proclaimed from the holy doors. Of course, the gospel reading is from the gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and follows that same lectionary that the epistle readings do as well. After the readings from the epistle and the gospel, the priest will then offer a sermon or a homily. The purpose of that sermon is to encourage the faithful to action. It is not meant in the Orthodox tradition to be a line-by-line -line commentary necessarily, although St. John Chrysostom did do that sometimes in his sermons. But the way that they are delivered today is to practically apply the words of the epistle and the gospel to the faithful people today so that they can put them into action in their everyday life and to be encouraged to be able to live their lives as a Christian in this very difficult world. Following the epistle, the gospel, and the sermon, this really concludes what is called the Liturgy of the Word, the first section of the Divine Liturgy. Now, Father Alexander Schmemann, in his commentaries on the Divine Liturgy, talks about how during the Divine Liturgy, we actually are able to partake of the Word of God twice during the entire service. The one that we think of the most would be the Eucharist, where we partake of the Word of God in the bread and the wine that we receive as the body and blood of Christ. But what we have just con concluded with the epistle, with the gospel, and with the preaching of that gospel, we have also been able to partake of the Word of God in a very real and profound way. And so this area of the service is concluded with that encouragement and that inspiration to be able to live our lives following the words of the apostles and following the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ himself. And after having heard those important words,